Hello, welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 104, the Cube Wizard and Analysis Services 2005. I'm having to break the Cube Wizard down into two different videos, one for 2005 and one for 2008, because there are significant differences between the two. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go through this presentation. The Cube Wizard in 2005 uh, can be used to build a cube and that includes creating the dimensions if you haven't already made them separately. And that's a difference if you're used to Analysis Services 2000 at all. You had to do the dimensions there first and then you could build the cube. Well here you can actually just run the cube wizard and it will create the dimensions for you. And in those dimensions it will add in the attributes and try to generate hierarchies as well. And I'll talk about that process more in just a moment. The cube wizard can also be used to create an empty cube. You, des you define the structure of the cube and it then creates the cube, but what happens then is it basically creates the DSV and will then go and create the physical schema tables in a relational database, a SQL Server in this case. So you could actually define what the cube should look like and then generate the star schema that supports that particular cube. And remember, uh, if you didn't see the DSV video, you certainly should watch it. Fascinating stuff. But the cube wizard can only see a, a DSV, a data source view. It cannot see the physical data. It only sees this logical layer of the DSV. Now, when you're running through the wizard, and I'll show you all this actually running, of course, in just a moment. But the wizard is going to attempt to identify dimension and fact tables. It's going to be based on their usage in the DSV. It looks for, at the joins and how they're used and tries to figure those out. Now occasionally there will be tables that are both dimension and fact tables. And sometimes that's right. Sometimes the wizard identifies that and it's not right. And you have to go in and fix that. In addition, the wizard is going to ask you to identify a time dimension. Now you don't always have one, but usually you will. And so it's best to go ahead and identify that because it does several things for you. It lets you build a natural hierarchy on the fly, and we'll talk more about those uh, coming up in future videos. But it also enables uh, support for some advanced analysis later. There are some uh, tools that will automatically add in calculations, and some of those are time-based, and you need a time dimension in order for that to work. The measures, uh, the cube is going to look, or the cube wizard is going to look at every fact table, and any numeric column that is not joined to a dimension table, it's going to assume as a measure. Now I point that out because in this example I have pulled in all the dimensions that tie to the keys in the fact table. So it's not going to try to assume any of these keys or measures. But if I hadn't pulled in all the dimensions, then it would actually pick some of these keys and, and assume that they are measures and you have to make sure you uncheck that. So again, I will go through and look at that. The measures are grouped into what are called measure groups and by default there is one measure group per fact table. So it will create a measure group for each fact table with the same name as the fact table and then the measures from those fact tables go into the proper measure groups. Now you can change that up a little bit later but that's the default behavior. Now the dimensions when the wizard tries to create these, if they haven't already been created, it assumes that every column in there is going to become an attribute. And this is one of the biggest changes between 2005 and 2008. 2008 does not take all the columns and add them as attributes. It takes a very minimalist approach, whereas the 2005 wizard takes uh, sort of the let's just grab everything approach. I call it the kitchen sink approach because it throws in everything including the kitchen sink. And the, the dimension, with all the attributes, all the columns are pulled in as attributes. And the wizard attempts to identify hierarchies, and I mentioned this was one of the wizard's weaker points. It doesn't uh, always do a very good job of this. Some of the hierarchies it imagines it sees are not really hierarchical structures. You, you'll have to go in and remove those. So let's actually take a look at running the cube wizard. Here I have a project in BI Dev Studio for 2005, and it's the same one that I used in the DSV video, except that was 2008. I've just recreated the same thing here. I have 
a data source to the AdventureWorks DW database. And I have a data source view called AdventureWorks DSV. I have two fact tables, the fact internet sales and the fact reseller sales. And then I have all the dimensions for those. So I haven't created the, the sub diagrams, but otherwise this is the same as uh, what uh, I ended the DSV video with. So I'm going to right click on the cubes folder and choose new cube. This opens up the cube wizard and when I next, this is where I have the two options. I can build a cube using the data source which is the normal behavior. The other option of course is to build the cube without the data source which will then generate the schema once you've designed the cube and the dimensions. But I'll go ahead and create a cube using a data source. The other option I have is the auto build and it will either try to create the attributes and the hierarchies or I can say attributes only. Uh, let's leave it at the default behavior which is create attributes and hierarchies. So I'll simply click next here and it asks me which data source views to use and there is only one and again that's all that the cube wizard can see are the data source views. So I will select that and simply click next. And what it's doing now is examining that DSV and trying to determine which tables are the fact and uh, tables and which are the dimension tables. It will then come through and show me what it has identified. So fact internet sales it sees as a fact. These other tables it sees as dimension tables. Then again fact reseller sales it sees as a fact. If I scroll down here you'll notice it thinks dim reseller is both a fact and a dimension table. In our case it is just a dimension table so I'll unclick the fact checkbox for dim reseller. Now I can also see this in a diagram form and I can zoom in on this and say show me uh, the, you know, highlight the fact tables, highlight the dimension tables and so on. Um, but I'm going to go back to the table view. I'm going to again unclick dim reseller. That's one thing about the diagram. It will turn some of those back on. And what I'm going to do now is at the top this is very important that you see time dimension table. Just because you name your time dimension table dim time doesn't mean anything. The wizard doesn't look at those names. It just asks you to pick one. So if you pick a time dimension here, then the next screen you get will appear. If you don't assign one here, you won't see this next screen. But when I click next, this wants you to assign various columns in your time dimension to these what they call time property names. You have to do at least one. But what I'll do here is I'll drop this down and these are the columns in my dim timetable. And I will choose the calendar year. Now there are others, there's a fiscal year and there's some others, but just I'll keep this simple for now. I'll choose calendar year as the year. I'll skip half year, not choose a semester, but quarter. I'll come down and choose calendar quarter. And then I'll skip to month. And I have a couple of options with month. I have an English month name and I have a month number of year. Well, we'll see later how these can affect uh, the display and, and, and how you work with the dimension. But for now, I'll just pick month, number of year. And then the date, those are individual days. I'll use my full date alternate key. That actually is a date column in my time dimension. Now again, there are plenty of others down here. There are uh, fiscal years uh, or, or fiscal quarters, you know, fiscal dates. I could assign those. but. For now, I'm simply going to choose uh, a very simple structure and click Next. Now, after clicking Next, it goes through and examines the fact tables. And again, just looks for numeric columns that are not used as part of a relationship with another table. And it just assumes all of those are measures. Now, I have a revision number column. And that's really not a measure. You don't add up revision numbers and have a valid measure. So I'll uncheck that. But everything else in here actually is correct. And if you notice, down here at the bottom, there's a fact internet sales count. And in fact, in fact reseller sales, I'll unchoose the uh, revision number here and scroll down to the bottom and there is a fact reseller sales count. By default, the wizard will add a count to each measure group. So I'll click Next. And what it's doing now is looking for hierarchical structures inside of those dimensions. And again, this is not always the, uh, the best uh, moment for the cube wizard. It, it struggles a bit sometimes here. So 
this is where you can examine what the dimensions are that it's going to generate. And now I didn't have any dimensions created ahead of time. If I run the cube wizard and already have some dimensions created, I can add those in up front and then it won't have to generate all of these. But in this case, since I had no existing dimensions, it generated them. And if I expand this, it will show me, for example, in dim currency, it only found attributes. It did not find any hierarchies, which is correct. Uh, with dim customer, again, only attributes. That's not correct. There are some hierarchies in there that uh, we can talk about later in other videos. Uh, sales territory, uh, no hierarchies. Now in dim product, it thinks it found some hierarchies. And if I look at this, it goes from dim product category to dim product sub subcategory. And actually the name just ends there. It does go from product category to subcategory to the individual product. That is absolutely correct. Notice I can turn some of these off if they are incorrect, but I will, that, since that is correct, that's good. Notice also here, I can change the names of any of these. A hierarchy named dim product category dash dim product subcategory is not really a good name. So if I just click once on this, it highlights it, and I'll just call this um, product, cat uh, let's see, I don't want to call it product categories. So I'll just call it products. So that is the products hierarchy. I can do the same thing with my dimension names here. If I didn't want the word dim on here, for example, I could change this to just product and have the product dimension. I'm not going to change that now, but just show you an example of what you could do. And everything else in the product table becomes a hierarchy, That's or an attribute. Those are uh, a lot of attributes for a dimension, and I'll talk later about whether that's a good thing or not, and how users perceive that and how they can work with it. I'll continue on, dim promotion. In promotions, it finds some hierarchies. And one of those is the category to the discount percent. Now that is probably not a valid hierarchy. So I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want it. Uh, dim employee in the uh, hierarchy. It goes from department name to title. Again, probably not a valid hierarchy. So I will turn that off. Uh, reseller. Again, here's one, annual revenue to number of employees. No, I don't want that. I'll turn that off. And finally, dim time. Now, here is a hierarchy. And again, this is built because of how I set those attributes as an earlier part of the wizard. And if I expand that, you see, in fact, there are the calendar year, quarter, month, number of year, and full date alternate key uh, that I set earlier. So at this point, I am ready to continue in the wizard. So I'll simply scroll down here and click Next. And it's asking for a cube name. And AdventureWorks DSV is not a good cube name. I'll just call this AdventureWorks. And click Finish. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and create the cube and all of those dimensions. Now, what you see looks a lot like the DSV just looked. So this is one of the areas of confusion for some people who are new to analysis services. I'll flip back to the DSV here for a moment and now back to the cube. Okay, one of the obvious differences is that the tables here, the dimension tables, have a blue header. The fact tables have a yellow header. But uh, also along the left-hand side, you'll notice that the cube has measures and dimensions, whereas the DSV has the diagram organizer and the tables. However, it's still easy to get confused, especially when you're getting started. And sometimes you th you'll think you're in one, uh, and you'll be right-clicking back here trying to create a new named query, and it's not here. And you'll be like, what is going on? So just be aware uh, of that potential issue. Now at this point, the cube is created. Uh, you see the cube over here in the Solution Explorer, AdventureWorks.Cube, and you see the dimensions that were created. Now there are a lot of things to talk about. Uh, you'll notice there is one time dimension, dim time, but over here in the dimensions for the cube, there is the ship date, the due date, and the order date. Those actually all use dim time, but uh, of course they are, they, they look like separate dimensions when analyzing the cube. So the next part of this is you could actually go ahead and deploy this cube and have it filled with data and start browsing it. And We'll talk about that whole process coming up here in a future video as well. But that is the Cube Wizard for Analysis Services 2005. So, in summary, 
the Q Wizard for 2005 kind of takes that kitchen sink approach, uh, an American colloquialism that means everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, it just includes everything. It just throws everything at it to try to, to make something useful. So it includes all of the columns in the dimension tables as attributes. It tries to detect hierarchies and build those for you. So it really throws a lot of things in there. By contrast, the 2008 uh, Cube Wizard takes a very minimalist approach and doesn't add all the columns as, as attributes. It doesn't generate hierarchies for you. And that will be the next video. I'll show you the, the stark difference between those two. When you are using the Cube Wizard in 2005, uh, it is very important, obviously, to correctly identify the fact and dimension tables and to identify a time dimension if you, in fact, have one. So, the Cube Wizard in 2005, it's good for building a cube quickly. I don't tend to use it all that often anymore, except for demos. Uh, I go ahead and build the dimension tables manually and then build the cube manually, and I will show that process in future videos as well. Um, one of the reasons I tend not to use the Cube Wizard in 2005 especially is that I have to do so much cleanup afterwards. And that will be discussed in uh, some future videos in the very near future uh, with regards to dimensions and uh, creating those on the fly, uh, hiding attributes, removing attributes, and, and how users actually browse the data.